Good evening. My name is Jennifer McCready. I'm chairman of the board. And beside me is Ken Brooks, who is the president. And he will be talking to you shortly. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the 45th Mill Valley Film Festival. We are all here having suffered two years of COVID and everything under the sun. So it's really wonderful to see you and thank you for coming out. Uh, there's a huge array of wonderful films. The difficulty, of course, is going to be what to see. There'll be murder and mystery and romance and adventure. And you will have a wonderful, wonderful evening and I'll be there with you. Thank you. And this is Ken Broad. Hello. Thank you all for coming. This is my favorite time of year. I'm sure it is for many of you as well uh, because of the festival. Um, the one thing I wanted to bring attention to today is the theater that we're in, which was built in 1929 and has been under the control of Cinemark as the main tenant for 44 years. There's one more year left on the lease and then it reverts to CFI control and ownership. So. And as you can tell, CF, um, Cinemark has really not spent a lot of money on upkeep. <laughs> so that's one of the things uh, I'm really looking forward to. So less than a year next September 1st, we take full control of the theater. So you'll be seeing the changes and hearing a lot more about that to come. For now though, we'd just like to introduce uh, Zoe Elton, uh, Director of Programming for the festival. And she will introduce the cast director and uh, everything else about what's to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Jennifer. And welcome, everybody. It's so great to see you all. Um, I would like to begin by thanking our opening night sponsor, who's been here uh, with the California Film Institute supporting us for 15 years. And she's, she's somebody who arrived at our doorstep with a great love of film and documentaries particularly, and has been a phenomenal supporter of all things CFI all these years. So a big shout out to Vicky Soulier, thank you. And I know that a lot of you are members, and I would say over the last couple of years particularly, it's been so important uh, for us to know that we have you, our membership community, really supporting the work that we do, supporting the mission of CFI and Mill Valley Film Festival. And so give yourselves a round of applause. Thanks to our membership. Um, and I also, for tonight, particularly want to thank Netflix and Kelly and the Dalton gang, who um, months ago, when I knew that there was going to be a new Knives Out film coming, I started bugging them because I had a hunch that it might be a really excellent opening night film. And Kelly just kept saying, well, it's not ready yet. And it just, it, we went on and on and on. Well, how late can I show it to you? But you know what, they came through. And um, I think that you this evening will have a very different experience in some ways from my experience of the film because it was Mark Fishkin and me in a theater alone um, with this film. And I would say that as soon as it was over, I wanted to watch it again. Um, and uh, it's an incredible ensemble cast. You're going to be meeting some of them now. Um, we're going to talk for a little bit before uh, you see the film, but I know that you're anxious to see the film. So let me bring up our guests. Uh, first of all, uh, producer Ram Bergman. Ram. Great. And actors. Kate Hudson, Leslie Odom Jr., Katherine Hahn. Woo! And the Marvel Meister of Mystery, filmmaker Ryan Johnson. Woo! And now we will sing the national anthem. 
Here? Come up here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get everyone lined up here. I want you all to be in to find your line. Sorry. Now the question is... It's much funnier up here. I can... Do you want me to take it? I'm going to have you guys be in the light, and I'm just going to stand over here because, you know, you got to do that. Um, so, a question for the actors. Start with you. For once. <laughs> well, exactly. This is, this is how it goes in Mill Valley. Um, when, do you remember where you were and what your first reaction was when you received and read this screenplay? I was in bed. Um, I remember having the sensation that I had watching the first Knives Out, which was, as I was turning the page, I kept thinking, how is he going to pull this off? How is he going to pull this off? How is he going to pull this off? And as I get deeper and deeper into the reading of it, the delight and awe I felt that he was pulling it off was it was just o overwhelming. Like he just is such a fair and just writer and filmmaker <laughs> that it just felt so satisfying. I don't know if you guys felt that uh, as well, but that the deeper I got into reading it, the more I couldn't believe that he was actually pulling it the heck off. Like it was so aw <laughs> that feeling that of delight. And then when I was able to see the film, all of us together at TIFF, it felt the same freaking way that I did as I was reading it, that you just can't believe that this guy pulls it off. Woo. This guy, this guy right here. This guy. I, I had, I had no, the, You haven't seen the movie, don't clap yet. <laughs> she could be totally wrong. She's been wrong, but no. I had, I, I went in a little more maybe like skeptical of, I wonder what these first 20 pages is gonna feel like. And, and immediately it was like, oh, he just transported me to a completely different mystery. And that was what I was so like, I was like, oh, Ryan is such a like genius. <laughs> and that was what sat with me. And then of course, you know, seeing all these like deliciously terrible characters, it sort of has the thread of the last one with a totally different, completely different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Which then I had the same thing at TIFF where I was like, okay. And then there it was, <laughs> it was like, ooh. <laughs> This is good. <laughs> it's really good. Where, I, where were you? Uh, I was at home. Okay. Uh, I was also in bed. No, I'm kidding. I wasn't. Hey. In bed. But uh, <laughs> I, it's a more intriguing start. I had a I had a Zoom with with uh, the genius with the maestro, and uh, if you can believe it, you know, I mean, he's he's so kind and and warm, and so he he was just. Um, you're not gonna feel it when you watch it, but he just, he was like a, there's not a ton for Lionel to, to do, and so I just don't want you to get, oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm giving anything away. No, no spoilers, he was, no spoilers. Yeah, he, anyway. He dies he, very early in the movie, so it's not yeah, a spoiler at all, know. it's just, it's not a. You know, it is, it is one of the only black characters, and so he is, uh, but, he didn't want me to worry about that anyway. He said, he said I'm, st I'm still sort of conceptualizing this character, but he, anyway, he was, he was taking care of me even before I read the script. I read the script and, and was, was so happy to, I offered him a couple of things that I thought maybe I could bring to the role, but this is the most important thing. Uh, what I got from that initial meeting was just, you know, his, his kindness and his generosity. And then when, you, when I watched the film, I saw uh, I saw Ryan's care, the depth of his care for each one of us in the edit. You know, he really v valued each one of this, this it's, a, it's a murderer's row, as it were, and he really takes just such, such great care with each one of us uh, uh, in, in the final showing. And Ram, you, you were a producer on the, uh, the first Knives Out. Um, how did you get involved with this one? Did you take much persuasion? <laughs> You want to come into the light, producer? Yeah, come into the light. <laughs> We've been working together for almost 20 years. Right. So. Yeah. So. I'm the luckiest human being in the world. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, Rom kept us, you know, under control. We were a very rowdy crew, cast of characters, and this was the guy who was like, calm down. <laughs> we're going to get through this, all of us alive. Um, 
<laughs> that seems kind of ironic with all of you alive. <laughs> Ryan, um, obviously, you have a, you've, you've created an amazing group of people here. This is definitely a cast to die for. Um, and when you write a murder mystery, do you, because, you know, you're obviously getting quite good at it. Do you know who done it from the minute you start writing? Um, usually, but I think that the trick is, and also the, the I, I, I'm sorry this is an introduction and not a Q&A afterwards. I feel terrible talking the movie up before no, no, you see it. No, no spoilers. Like it, okay, yeah, I, no, no, yeah. but I, I just even, keep those expectations low. It's okay. okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I generally do, and you generally figure that part out, but honestly, the part that takes more work and the part that I think we lead with, with the last Knives Out movie and also with Glass yeah. Onion, is not even the who done it. The object of this and the way to successfully do a good who done it, I think, is to give an audience a ride where they're having so much fun they mm. stop thinking about who done it. And yeah. uh, the point of it is that it reaches. It's just like any other story. It pulls you in. You have a blast. It reaches a really satisfying conclusion. Um, whether or not you guess it or not, just becomes kind of the the, the cherry on top. Yeah, so. that's great. And I have to know. Glass Onion. At what point did it that become the title? Was that from the going out the gate, or? I no. I started writing it, and it was. Um, and you'll see. You'll see when you watch it in in, in a few minutes. But the uh, there's uh, there's a thing in it of like okay this character Miles Braun who Edward plays has like a mansion and I thought okay, okay there's a metaphor of like this layered glass thing and like is it glass palace is it glass and I literally took out my phone and opened the music. Uh, app and just searched the word glass and thought what songs have glass in them and because I'm a big Beatles fan Glass Onion was the first thing that popped up uh, of course. Oh, oh can we call it Glass yeah. Onion and, and, and I, I mean I think the words of Glass so Onion so honest I, I know it's right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm, there had to be a great backstory there somewhere I love it well it's yeah great. it's it's it lends its as you'll see it lends itself Benoit Blanc yeah. Daniel's detective loves his, his overwrought metaphors and Glass Onion lends itself to that yeah well let's Let's go into the into the metaphor. Thank you all so much. Thank have you guys. A, have have the enjoyed. best time. Thank you. We love you guys. Thanks, Zoe. And now, please welcome our moderator, Pete Doctor, and Woot! <laughs> producer Ram Bergman. Kate Hudson, <laughs> Leslie Odom Jr., <laughs> Catherine Hahn, <laughs> and filmmaker Ryan Johnson. I'm, I'm so sorry you guys didn't like it. Uh, yeah, oh, wasn't that a fantastic movie? So cool. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the, the movie is so fun, so clever. It's, it's a lot like that box that gets sent to everybody. That's a clever working of all sorts of mechanics. I, I want to just start with you, uh, Ryan. What is the first element that got you going on the film? What was the thing that sort of first locked in? Um, well, it was kind of like, and by the way, Pete, thank you so much for being here and doing this. Pete Doctor, Happy ladies to. and gentlemen, man, My myth, pleasure. legends. And thank you guys for coming out. I'm so happy to, to I'm glad they gave me the tall chair. I'm, you know, I, did, I was going to say, I want yeah. you to feel you secure. Yeah, you needed it. <laughs> um, well, I, I uh, after, when we made the first Knives Out movie, we were immediately thinking, boy, it'd be fun to make more of these if this catches on. And when the first one did well, immediately I started sitting down and, and, and writing it. And I mean, part of it was um, uh, knowing that I didn't want to do a sequel to the first one. I wanted to make the equivalent of a new Agatha Christie Poirot novel. And so a whole new cast, a whole new idea, a whole new tone, a whole new deal. Um, and so I'm a very big fan of The Last of Sheila, which is a, 
a murder, yeah, murder mystery fans know it, but it, it's less known. It, it's a movie that Stephen Sondheim wrote with Anthony Perkins, and it has the most 70s cast of all time, um, but it's, a, it's an incredible, fun who, 70s whodunit that's set kind of, it's like a murder mystery game that um, James Caan uh, plays this character who does this murder mystery game. No, it's not James Caan. It's uh, James Coburn, James Coburn, sorry. Does this character who plays a, does a murder mystery game for his friends, and it's set in like a tropical locale. Um, I'm also a big fan of Evil Under the Sun the, the, the version with Houston off in it. And so the notion of doing a tropical thing just seemed like, oh, this would be a fun thing to differentiate from the first one. And yeah, that was So that was the, the beginning, was the, the setting? So that was a setting and then some ideas about um, the, the structure of it and kind of the big structural conceit of it were the other big thing, the notion of can you tell a story and then kind of do this thing at the midpoint where you revisit it and give a new perspective and can you make that work in the context of a murder mystery that seems fun. I mean, whodunits are famous for the, the plot machinations, but the characters are so great. And I'm curious where that starts, what was scripted, and then what did the actors bring to the individual parts, if you want. Oh, there was no script. These guys just riffed. It oh, was just okay. kind of a, <laughs> a series of emotion ball games, and it just kind of emerged. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you, you, you read the script and then you get these guys and, you know, it, 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 that's... <laughs> yeah, what, that's what happens it. between, you've read the script and then you show up on the stage, what happens between that time? Oh, that's a very loaded question. Uh oh um, between, between reading the script and then showing up on set? Yeah, what sort of prep work or, or influence do you as an actor have on for the part? Bird. Oh, for, for the character. Oh, okay, I understand. Um, it's been a long night. Um, um, let's see. For me, I mean, honestly, when, when I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but, but I feel like I had a similar experience and everybody did when they read the script, was that it's on the page. I mean, Ryan is an absolutely brilliant writer, and you, as someone who loves to read and reads a lot of scripts, um, you don't get to read scripts like that very often. And then when you read a character, especially for me, like Birdie J., uh, you only just hope that you get the opportunity to bring that to light for for someone like Ryan. Um, so that was my experience. I just wanted to bring what he put on the page to the, to to the screen. Did you do anything that Ryan was sort of like, wait, what? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's a question for Ryan. <laughs> I. I <laughs> I hope not. And then I hope, yes, I hope sometimes I did kind of bring something uh, that he was like, yes. Um, but uh, I, there was one moment where, where Ryan did say, because Catherine and I have history, uh, where I was like, I just want to put the camera on you guys. You guys can like riff, you know? And there was that moment where I was like, maybe I wish I had like a Claire Birdie sitcom offshoot, <laughs> you know? Um, us in these outfits and her beige and my hats and... I was like, this is like a, this is like Ab Fab 3. Coming um, to Netflix this fall. <laughs> That's right, Birdie and Claire. Uh, yeah. but. Well, I think I was, just to add to that, you kind of alluded to it too. I think um, a lot of it is, the, we, uh, a lot of the characterization was made clear with the costumes too, with Jenny. You know, she, Jenny, uh, all those meetings were pretty early and, and that tells, that told me a lot yeah. and you know, about oh. who I was. It was like a dream walking into the her 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 room of wow. color or, or beige. Yeah. And yeah, it was really heartbreaking for me to walk in and see all of the all of the racks of beautiful clothes for <laughs> Leslie and Kate, and then see your robe. Yes, and to see a lot of beige. But I will also say my first movie was with Kate and to just come back full circle and see her tear it up as Birdie has just been so magical for me. Uh, uh, it's like, was so gorgeous. So this is a, a special one for me, for sure. Like really beautiful. And I would be in that ab fab with you any second. <laughs> so what's it like on a Ryan Johnson set? It is terrifying. <laughs> He is such a tight. No, it is. It's <laughs> so lonely. <laughs> he separates everyone. No, it is like it is the it is the gentlest, most fun, like most unsolved. Like I think 
you know, we come from the theater. I can safely say that. And we, so there is a feeling of, there definitely on this, felt like there was a solid backstage. And then the set, which was like the stage. And so we were all literally backstage together, <laughs> hanging out. And then we would be called to the stage, AKA the set. And then we would go back to, like, so it really felt like we were doing. Yeah, a, except in Greece. In Greece. Yeah. <laughs> when but it really half of us did. were in like Hydra. Uh, yes. <laughs> but it was like, it felt like we were made, we made this like crazy, beautiful little ensemble. Like that we just, because of Ryan, and his knack for just knowing what a good soul is, and for Rom, and who just also, and also Daniel Craig, who just set a tone of like just being a decent person. Yeah. We just were able to just make this beautiful, playful atmosphere where we were all able to just make fools of ourselves and then rein it back in and then it just felt just really a safe container. I think too, Ryan has a very particular laugh, right? Yeah. And it was a very large set. So sometimes you'd be way over like over where you guys are and, and Ryan would be behind the camera and you'd do something and you'd hear the laugh. <laughs> And like it, it, it was like a, it was like a cozy blanket going over you. You were like, oh, he's so he's happy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, Ram, when when the actors are called to the set, who is the last one to show up? Oh, oh Pete, Pete, terrible, Pete, why are you gonna question. do us dirty like that? <laughs> All right, you no don't comment. Have to that. <laughs> terrible. Why are you gonna do Catherine dirty like that? It's not fair. <laughs> Who was the last one? So, Ryan, with, <laughs> good producer, good producer. Some things remain in Belgrade. That's right. Ryan, with, the, with this, this genre, night. there are so many uh, elements that are expected, and yet you are able to deliver them with such an unexpected twist. How much of that are you, are you consciously leaning into as you're writing? Are you thinking, oh, this is what people are going to expect, versus just kind of following an intuition for what you think would be fun or surprising? Um, I mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think you can get yourself into trouble if you start doing too much math in your head in terms of expectations and actively trying to subvert something. I think you really just have to, um, and, and for me, I, I really just tried to take a cue from, I'm a big Agatha Christie fan, and what she did with all of her books is with every one you can, when you get to the end of every one of her books, you can see what the unique thing is she had never done before that excited her and that um, flips around what you expected on its head but in a way that feels really organic, it just feels exciting. And so I think you just have to, I think the trick to that is just you, you can't get too much inside the math of all of that stuff. You have to just first and foremost focus, not even on the mystery, but just focus on giving the audience a great ride. And I feel like the real win is if you can create a movie that's so much fun, that's, that's fun and that takes you on a ride and brings you to a, not even a surprising, but a satisfying conclusion. And then in that way, the audience at that point, hopefully doesn't even care if they figure it out or not. That's not what it's about. It's about what every other movie is about, which is about given the audience a great experience, you know? Yeah, you said something about like, it's, it's not a crossword puzzle, it's a roller coaster, yeah. which I thought was a great description. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. as a cast, did you discover your character through interaction with other characters? Were there scenes where suddenly dif different aspects of your character sort of came to light as a result of interactions? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that you can, you know, a great ensemble, you can't take that for granted. It doesn't always happen, you know. Um, I think if you're invited to a party that, you know, Ryan Johnson is planning, you go. Because he, like, he, like, like Catherine said, And you said, know great a, ensembles. Yeah, I mean, you know, but like Catherine said, he, he has a knack of, you know, putting... Uh, certain kind of souls together that are going to find it. But yeah, I think those first couple weeks of shooting is, yeah, you know, uh, I remember being on the dock, you know, and, and kind of just like, yeah, just trying to feel each other out. Okay, that's what you're, you know, who am I within this thing? Um, and yeah, how do I, how do I add to it? How do I support the work of the actors that are around me? Yeah, that do the dock was really interesting. It's funny, we, we haven't talked, really talked about that, but you bringing that up, it was kind of that first, we'd done some rehearsals, we'd done our 
you know, screen tests and, and you know, uh, hair and makeup tests and stuff. So we'd felt all of our characters individually, but that was really like our introduction to each other as our characters. And it was hilarious. I mean, it was like every entrance was like another like, oh, this is the best. Claire, Duke. I mean, it was, you know, Duke. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and, and we did. We kind of like felt each other in, that, in those couple of days. Um, and, um, and Ethan Hawke. I mean, come on. That was like the he best. He started us off kind of. Oh, with, the, the, the like, 90s what? teen was like in me was really like, excited. He did. He <laughs> it was like the priest us. who blessed it. I think oh, he delivered so the best. blessing at the end of the day. It was like, go for it, <laughs> then have a good shoot. <laughs> and he and disappeared. Like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah vanished <laughs> like his character and never was never seen yeah. again. Yeah. But but it was great from our perspective, you know. And then honestly, to because because Ryan didn't show it to us until we were at TIFF in Toronto. So we all saw it for the first time with an audience of what was it 1700 people, which is like terrifying. And 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 you know, but but that oh that scene, I had the same feeling. You know, where I was like seeing everybody now on the screen the, the screen for the first time, but I, it sort of it was like I, I would hope that how people feel watching the movie, which is they can't wait to see it again. It's like it, very rare that you're in a film experience where you're in it and you just can't wait to see it again. I mean, that just literally maybe happens once or twice in a career. Um, yeah, I was yeah. going to ask about things like the glass switching, which is played a couple different times. Is that in there the first time and we just didn't see it? It is, 100%. Okay, yeah. you're honest. Yeah. Okay. No, we played very, very fair with that. Yes. And like, um, also, I don't know if we're doing, yeah, I just, it, if, Please, no one record this and post it on the internet if I talk about it. <laughs> We're all cool. We're all cool here. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, we play very, very, very fair with it. And um, we, uh, it, even down to, um, you know, when, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm so paranoid I'm going to talk yeah, around it even. But when a, cert, when a certain weapon <laughs> Rom's is, like, Rom's like, don't say it. Um, <laughs> When a certain weapon is stolen from a certain person, if you watch it a second time, you can see that person steal the weapon. You can see them where they hide it. It's there's a gun on frame for like five frames. You can see it if you look closely. You can see a phone in a pocket for absurd lengths of the scene, just blatantly there. And I'm, I'm it, to the point where it's like I, I'm sure a lot of you probably oh, saw it and like, caught it. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. We have to watch it again. And, anyway, so yeah, but uh, but we, we there's lots of stuff in there where they, it was very fun to me because the, the whole notion of the thing is it's right there in plain sight, and so we wanted to be very very fair and play to that. And it's not something that contributes to the first viewing, but if you go back and revisit and are interested in that, it's I, I think it's fun to see that stuff. Were there any elements of the film that got cut? from uh, in editing that you especially there were, loved? Or? There were a lot of, yeah. <laughs> there always are, there always are. You always Aww. have to cut like fun stuff. I know there was a, so much fun stuff. Yeah, I was no. thinking about all kinds of stuff that we, I was like, there's a whole other, like, I mean, the, 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 the cuts, I mean, that whatever you could do with that would be so hilarious. There's so much. Yeah, yeah. DVD extras. Yeah. Well, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix <laughs> extras. That gets a laugh now. <laughs> oh my God! How did that happen? <laughs> were there any set pieces that Laser were especially dish. challenging due to time constraints or weather or anything that stands out as like, oh boy? I, I mean, want to I mean, that. yeah, Wrong. I mean, because Greece looks so beautiful and it is so gorgeous, and you don't want to. To complain because yeah. it's a but my god it was it was so so hot we were there in the the and height the cicadas of summer and the cicadas were so loud you guys cicadas <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> So annoying. Sometimes. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it was it was beautiful. It was fantastic, but oh. it was really hot. And the wind. Oh, your hat. So we had one scene. It was like this delicate emotional scene where Kate so is like better. talking about like how, you know, she used to have this dynamic with Edward and she's getting oh, into yeah. it. And the wind kept picking up. She's wearing this huge hat and it just turned into a sail. And every, oh. every take, it'd be like, woof, like, it was gone. And I was like. Uh, that is true. The whole time. It really was the wind sabotaging. really was crazy up there. So what about the, the last scene of the destruction of everything? How much of that was real, happening, 
there on set versus post? Like, can you talk just about the the end, the climactic ending? Yeah. Oh, the smashing was. You guys oh. smashed some some shit. We smashed a lot. Oh of yeah, that. and we knew. Yeah, we because we'd spent so much time shooting with those glass pieces. Like everybody had one picked. I'm gonna break that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get that guy. That's the That's one I'm mine. gonna break. That's mine. <laughs> And then we had one actor, I won't say who it was, uh, who broke a real one. Remember that one? Uh, remember that? Uh, we were like, huh, that wasn't what you were supposed to break. <laughs> Did well, you remember was, that? Well, no, there was one where, was, I'm gonna call her out, yeah. because yeah, Jessica, right. Jessica Hennick, uh, so, right. but this was my fault. So basically she has this big, <laughs> like one of a kind piece that she needs to, all, the, the whole action is, uh, is that she just, throws it down and then laughs basically. Yeah. And so I was like, and so we started the cameras rolling and I was like, I wanna make sure we get the cues right. Oh. So I go, okay, yeah. so, the, it, so the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna say three, two, one, and then you're gonna go and she threw it down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in the movie actually, cause she looks right at the camera lens and goes. really fun. That was fun. It was as fun as it looked. Very cathartic. Yeah. Working were, it out. Yeah. Were there any physically challenging elements of the film where you were like, oh boy, this is not gonna, not Just gonna my go. outfits. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Just like, not, you know, yeah. Just the <laughs> you know. So great. Well, there's so much great stuff in the film. I know we're, we're out of time. I've heard that we're all going to get COVID gunshots in the mouth as we leave. Hey, so thank you for over. that. No, but it's, it's a fantastic film. I know I'm going to be telling a lot of my friends to look out for this one. So I hope you'll all do the same. And thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Pete. Thanks yeah. again, man.